Alright folks, today I'm going to show you how to control your fall, let you know exactly where it's aiming and why. Now while it gets information from various sources, there's three main states that you need to be concerned about. Whether it's ranged, whether it's ground stabilized or inertial tracking, and if it's got a contrast lock. It can have these independently or combined and these three states can affect one another. First up is ranging. Simply put, if you haven't ranged, so no number down here on your IT23 screen, then all unguided weapon distances, including your cannon, are set to 1.1 Ks. Unranged, but with the laser toggle up, a launched Vicher fires the beam riding laser for 8 seconds, giving about 4 Ks of guidance, while the KH-25s will automatically range as you press launch. When you do fire a missile, the counter in your idea represents the amount of time of guidance that that missile has. Now if you're not firing missile and you have this laser toggle up and you press lock or if you hold on cage with a helmet sight moving in small small changes then it fires the ranging laser. The number of seconds it's firing is shown in your head on the left here. During this time, it will update the ranging based on the center of the tracking gate. If that's further than 15 k's out or pointing in the sky, you won't get a laser return, so it won't get a ranging and won't update anything. If you do get a ranging, that will update your weapons in terms of their predicted impact point, and from there you'd be able to save it as a nav target point or a daylink target. Once the laser stops firing, either because the countdown ran out or because you pressed laser reset early, from there on, if you move the shawl around, it will try and update the predicted ranging based on the angles you're changing your shawl with. This may not be that accurate. Also, if it's busy ranging and you change the angles a lot, so it scrolls across a wide distance of terrain, and maybe it finishes lasing before you stop moving. That ranging can go nuts, which will have a knock-on effect. So if the number looks unrealistic, just laser range again. The second state, in addition to ranging, is a contrast lock. The Schwal will pick up the difference in contrast between the target in the tracking gate box and the surroundings. This works by putting a Schwal on target for a distinct terrain feature doesn't have to be centered and the tracking gate this box needs to be on the boundaries of the target or smaller. For helis you can include some of the rotor disc in that sizing. Now press lock. If it succeeded the TA to a uh, target lock symbol appears in the HUD and screen. The tracking gate will now start breathing or shaking. If your tracking gate is too big, but you make it the right size by shrinking it or going to narrow field of view within 3 seconds of tapping lock, it will also lock up the target. The schwal will now move along with the target, and it also means it could be easier to laser range if the center of the tracking gate is able to bounce off the target. Locking gives the Rubicon extra information like whether the foe is left-handed or how to avoid that mighty PT belt he's wearing. But locking the target also gives inertial tracking, which gives you target lead calculation if you put an airborne target or moving ground target button. The system takes half a second or so to lock, so if you're dealing with a fast-moving target, you need to put the gate in front of the target and tap lock and release it just before it goes into the gate. That also means that if you have a lock on a fast moving target and you press lock again, especially if your lock was near the tailing end of the target, then sometimes it means that you will lose lock as it pauses to reconsider before relocking. Now instead of slewing onto the target with a hat and pressing lock, you can also have the schwal be in scan mode, tap and release lock and if it slews over target within 3 seconds, it might lock it up, though it's not that reliable. Then there's the helmet slew locking. Hold on cage, tap and release lock, then keep moving 
holding on cage as you slowly move the helmet sight across the target. Go check out my sniper vid ages back for more on this discovery. Now the chances of getting a lock is greatly reduced past 9 to 10 k's out in fog or low light. Fast moving targets can also only be locked at closer ranges and the odds of losing a contrast lock are higher on a fast mover. None of these settings, like contrast, affect the chances of a lock. All you can do is give it the best chance to lock by using illumination rounds if it's dark, keeping the lock by making a tracking gate just, just fit around the border of the target, rather than making it a tiny tracking gate. Automatic tracking needs your flight to be stable, so no more than 45 degrees bank, or 20 degrees per second changes in pitch or yaw. And of course you've got to keep the target within your gimbal limits of your schwal. It is worth noting that currently DCS uses fuzzy logic for checking this contrast lock, rather than what you see. So it could be very visible dusk, but the schwal can't lock anymore. Also Rex can't be locked, so you could use this to check if something's dead or not. And sometimes, uh, even if you have trees that block line of sight, your contrast lock still keeps on, even though they pass behind them. While you contrast lock, you can't use the slew hat to move the schwal anymore. It's stuck on the target. There are a few ways to unlock, however, I now need to discuss the inertial tracking before getting back to unlocking and relocking would make sense. Now in addition to ranging or contrast lock, your schwal could also have ground stabilization or inertial tracking. If the deal ingress, target points and helmet sight are off and you tap and cage, it brings up the schwal bore sighted. If you had it recently looking somewhere and still moving back to center, it will uncage at that spot instead. You can now use the slew hat to look around. The schwal and tracking gate around the center will float around with your movement. So looking off the side or up close, you'll see it glide across the terrain with your movement. If you press lock with the laser off, it now gains the Turgo TG symbol. That means it's tracking the ground. Try and keep itself aimed at that spot and compensate for the angle changes from your movement. It might be a rock solid track on that spot, though it might also only slow down on how fast it floats. If you have the laser on and you laser range when you lock the ground, that ground stabilization will become rock solid. And as long as you don't fly outside the Schwalz limits or gimbal limits, it will now stay pointed pretty much on that spot, perfectly ground stabilized. If you move the schwal around now, you would have to, especially if it moves large distances, you would need to laser range again to make sure it knows where to focus and ground stabilize properly on that new spot. If you had a contrast lock on a moving target and you lost lock, the TA symbol disappears and the TG, top left, Turga, comes back. However, now it remembers the inertial tracking from the last time it had a lock. It's not only compensating for your movement, but also the last movement it recorded of that target. If you unlock and the schwal is moving faster, slower or off course from the target that hasn't swerved, then it's because the ranging is out. If you have an accurate laser ranging and lost lock, the inertial tracking will be almost perfect and keep pace with the target at least until it swerves or changes speed. Like a contrast lock, inertial tracking also gives target lead calculations if you put on airborne target or moving ground target. If your schwal is moving around crazy like, odds are it's from the ranging going crazy, like if it dips to really low number, which then gives weird information when combined with the last recorded inertial tracking. The only way to remove the inertial tracking and this movement is by resetting the schwal, locking up a new target or feature, or uncaging to the helmet sight. 
Now that you understand the inertial tracking, back to unlocking and relocking. Resetting the Schwal unlocks the target, tells the Schwal to move back to ball site, and erases the ranging, ground stabilization, and inertial tracking. If you hold the slew hat in a direction and tap lock while doing so, the Schwal will unlock. This also fires the laser ranging if the laser is on. If instead of tapping, you tap and hold lock while holding a direction and then slew around, it will attempt to relock and relays when you release lock. So that's one way to re refine your aim on target, though it may be firing the laser twice for those of you concerned with laser burnout. If you locked up a target in a small tracking gate in a narrow field of view, then zoomed out, it can sometimes unlock. Finally, if deal ingress target points in the helmet side is off and you tap and cage, Unlocked, this would normally enter scan mode, making the schwal look left and right of that position by 10 degrees continuously, which you can change the speed of. But tapping on cage, once you have it locked, it will look like nothing happened and will keep the contrast lock. However, now if you move the slewing at, it will automatically break lock and continues inertial tracking. Neat if you don't want to fire the laser again. I don't think the Schwal has an unlazed default of 1.1Ks like unguided weapons for the purpose of inertial tracking. So just if it's not correctly laser ranged, the tracking may be off. Say you lost the lock on the target or chose to break lock to refine your aim. It goes into inertial tracking. Remember I said inertial tracking also needs the ranging to be correct. So if you only had an unlazed contrast lock or you switched off the laser toggle, thus clearing the ranging. The inertial tracking probably won't keep up with the target. So the fix, with the laser on, just press lock on a random piece of terrain that won't get stuck on. That then gives it almost accurate laser ranging. So now the inertial tracking calculates correctly and you'll have an easier time slewing the gate back onto the target. Of course, this doesn't help for targets against the skyline. Even if a helicopter is close to the ground and you lays the ground near it, then slewing back up, the Schwal will probably point up somewhere in the horizon and corrupt their inertial tracking. So of aircraft, I recommend you laser lock from the start rather than locking and maybe trying to relock to get a laser range and maybe losing your lock in the process. If you have trouble with an aerial target, try locking it up zoomed out. Having the tracking gate just, just big enough, as that also seems to hold the lock better. And it may be easiest to, especially if you can see the aircraft out of your canopy, to use the helmet slew locking for it. Now, a few other random tips and things to note about the Schwal. Your slew rate depends on inertial motion. So you won't always find the Schwal moving the same speed in all directions. You'll almost never experience this, but really up close, maybe under 300 meters, the helmet sight will be slightly off angle from the Schwal up front the nose here. If it loses contrast lock on a target, say from driving behind a building, it'll enter memory mode with this per symbol. If the inertial track holds and the target pops up into the tracking gate within three seconds, it'll automatically attempt to relock. If you don't want your Schwal contrast locking something when you laser range, then just use a really large tracking gate. Then it's less likely to find something to stick to and you can just laser range while spraying the air with a cannon if you needed to, without it getting stuck on one unit. Okay, so in summary, Give the Schwal the info it needs and it will automatically track and guide your weapons really accurately. But also, you may not need all of these features. It's just like trying to get a perfect hover when you're far away from obstacles. You may not need it. In low visibility, your laser still works fine, so your unguided munitions will calculate the impact point correctly and your Vichers will beam ride to that spot. Moving targets just get a bit harder to keep slewing onto. Similarly with the cannons or rockets, you don't need an accurate lasing between the eyes. General area should do just fine. 
And unless you're guessing the wrong range adjustment when you slew around, you may not need to fire the laser again. Next video I'll show you how you can mess with all this tracking if you want to old school it or deal with failures. This is Volk. Cheers.